All right, get started in about a minute, in about a minute. All right, take a quick look at this. Uh, I think this is pretty accurate. Um, I mean, it's certainly accurate for this week, but um, what I have been told is that when you guys get back uh, after quarantine next week, uh, we're still going to be in Chapter 12 doing Chapter 12 stuff, and you're not going to take the CMA, the other 7th grade test class to take their CMAS today, uh, and uh, today, tomorrow, and uh, Wednesday. You guys will not take your CMAS test until not – next week three-day week in this end of this week not not next week but the week following that and i believe i could be wrong on this but i believe it's going to be monday tuesday wednesday um but uh, i'm pretty sure that's what she said so we got a ways to go in fact we'll be almost done with our book by the time you take cmas it's pretty good you get, you get all the knowledge um it does mean that chapter 12 will be broken up somewhere in between but we'll be okay all right, so uh, we're going to drive on. Uh, we're going to take the Chapter 11 test this week on Wednesday. Uh, Danny asked me, uh, hey, is, is the uh, practice test your homework? Yes, it is. It's the only way that I know that you're actually doing it because you're not physically in the class. So I do need you to turn in something uh, showing that you have done this practice test. Now, I realize I'm giving you all the answers. So please do the practice test. Please do the practice test. We're going to do two days of practice tests. Just to make sure we got this. Uh, it also allows me to uh, help anyone that needs any help uh, during this time, since I can't physically, uh, you don't have essay with me at all. Um, so I'm gonna have two days to review. We probably only need one day, but I'll do two days. That way it allows me to help anybody that needs help. Okay, so I will share with you the uh, practice test and we will get going here. Uh, let's see, what do I want here? I want that to be like that and this to be like this here we go okay so uh this entire chapter was on integers uh abstract multiplying divide um, integers it is now the end of cmas hey LA. you guys were not taking the cmas that's for the other seventh grade all right um back to what i was saying uh this chapter was on abstract multiplying divide integers positive and negative numbers uh, and then it was also on graphing integers. Uh, and then lastly, it was on graphing linear equations. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, some of it was easy. If there's one thing that was the more challenging part, it was the very last thing we did was to graph the linear equations with the table of pain. All right. So uh, if you know what you're doing, you can work ahead. If not, I'll walk you through at least every section here, the adding, subtract, the multiplying part, the dividing part. Uh, we'll write down the rules, um, uh, my suggestions for your resource card, uh, and then uh, it, this will not take a, all 50 minutes of class, so we'll probably end a little bit earlier. I'll, then I'll open it up for anyone that needs individual help. All right, so here we go. So if I were making a resource card, I would need all the rules on it. So let's see. First thing we're doing is adding, subtracting. So this will be, I don't know, a box right here. So this will be for the add, subtract. So add. And I'm writing this with my finger, so cut me some slack. Uh, add slash subtract. Now we're not going to write all the individual steps, but just the major ones. So when you're adding subtracting, you simply ask yourself, do we have the same signs? Or do we have different signs? Meaning, do we have two positives, two negatives? Or do we have different signs? One positive, one negative. We're either going to have same or we're going to have different signs. When the signs are the same, well, then all you do is add the two numbers. When the signs are different, well, then you subtract the two numbers. Now, notice I'm leaving off the well, what do you do after you do the adding or the subtracting. So when you're adding, that's a horrible S. Let me do that again. It's really hard to do with your finger. Subtract. All right, so when you're adding, when I just simply add the two numbers, I need to ask myself, was I adding positive or negative numbers? So if you're adding positive numbers, well, the answer is positive. If you're adding negative numbers, 
The answer is negative. When the signs are different, you subtract big number minus the small number, right? Uh, and then you ask yourself, do we have more positives or more negatives? But the big, big idea here is that we're adding or subtracting. All right. So I won't do all of them, but I'll do many of them. So I have two numbers and we are in fact adding. Why do I know we're adding? Well, there's an addition sign right here. So I'm in the add subtract mode. Uh, four, we look to the left, the four is positive. And the three, we look to the left, the three is negative. Hey, different signs. When you have different signs, you subtract the two numbers. Four minus three is one. And there's more positives and there are negatives. So the answer is one. That's how you do it. Let's see another one. Oops. I meant to erase. I'll leave that other box up there. All right, next one. Remember, when you have two negative signs next to each, it's they have to be like this, next to each other. When you have two negative signs next to each other, it turns into one positive. Not a positive and a negative, but just one positive. That turns into three plus eight. Now, I can still follow these rules. Same or different signs. The three is positive. The eight is positive. It says when the signs are the same, we add. If you're adding positive, the answer is positive. If you're adding negatives, the answer is negative. So three minus negative eight is positive 11. This is the part where you stop me and say, why are you doing this? Or I'm confused at this rule. If not, we are moving on. All right, let's see. We got a negative one plus three. Uh, the one is negative. We're looking just to the left. The three is positive. We're looking just to the left. Those are different signs. It says subtract those numbers. Three minus one is two. And there are more positives than negatives. So the answer is positive two. Next one. Let's do a different. There we go. So I have two signs there. Let's see, the six is negative. Uh, the six is also negative. Those signs are the same. It says add those two numbers together. Six plus six, signs are the same. Six plus six is 12. We're adding negatives. So the answer is negative 12, negative 12. Maybe one more. All right, let's pick a fun one. Are there any of them fun? We'll see. All right, how about this one? All right, we're adding. Oh, there's a plus symbol. Uh, let's see, the four is negative, the one is positive. Those are different signs. Different signs mean subtract. Four minus one is three, but this time there are more negatives than positives. So the answer is negative three. Will I put numbers as easy as this? Yes, I will. They will be easy. I'm testing you on, do you know how to, what to do with adding, subtracting, Multiplying, dividing, positive and negative numbers. Not, you know, can you do this to a six digit number? The rules don't change. I can assess you on your ability to add, subtract, multiply and divide using smaller numbers. I don't need to make your life or my life more challenging. When you get to eighth grade, yeah, then the numbers will be large, right? Or multiple digits. And we can worry about that in eighth grade. But in seventh grade, we have to have the rules down. All right, any questions on adding or subtracting? We will move on to multiplication and division. So another box over here. Let's see the rules, different rules for, and it's both for multiplying and dividing. So rules for multiply or divide. Same rules for multiple, multiplying and dividing. And they kind of look like the rules for adding, subtracting, but they are different, All right? We still will have same or we will have different signs. So either two positives or two negatives, those are same, or we'll have different signs, one positive, one negative, or one negative, one positive, but the rule is different. The rule for same sign is that the answer will be positive. A negative times a negative is a positive, a positive times a positive is a positive. For a different sign, the answer is always negative. A positive times a negative is a negative, or a negative times a positive is also a negative. All right. So that's the rule for multiplying and dividing. So let's see how this works out. Let's see, I got a negative times a positive. Remember, you look to the left for the sign. Those are different signs. Different sign says the answer is always negative. I can already put a negative there and then do the math. 
Eight times eight is 64, so we get negative 64. Notice I put that negative immediately. The first thing I do is figure out is the answer positive or negative. That's kind of different for adding and subtracting, but for multiplying and dividing, the first thing I do is figure out is the answer positive or is the answer negative, right? That's one, uh, I don't know, easy way not to make a silly mistake. Okay, uh, next question. Hey, I got a negative times a positive. A negative times a positive, those are different signs. So the answer is negative. Three times eight is 24. So we get negative 24. Once again, I put that negative out there first before I did anything. So um, is this practice thingy and tomorrow's practice thingy gonna be what's on the, or like what kind of stuff is gonna be on the test? 100%, it will look exactly like this. I mean, there won't be as many questions, but it will look exactly like this. So what you're looking at right now is what the test will look like. And if you're like, woo, it's going to be easy. Yeah, it's going to be easy because you did a lot of work and you learned all the rules, right? If I had given you this test to start with, we'd have different results. All right. Uh, division. Let's see. Division, this, the rules don't change. So let's see. Do we have same or different signs? We look to the left. Negative and a negative. Hey, same signs. The answer is positive. So I can put equals. 60 divided by 6 is 10, so the answer is positive 10. So negative 60 divided by negative 6 is positive 10. Negative divided by negative is a positive. All right, I can't make this difficult because it really isn't that difficult once you understand and can apply the rules. All right, so let's see. Uh, this one, number 19, negative 21 divided by 7. Those are different signs. The 21 is negative. Uh, the seven is positive, so the answer is going to be negative. I put equals negative, and then I do the math. 21 divided by seven is three. So final answer, negative three. Negative three. Okay. So we've done the rules for adding. We've done the rules for multiplying to dot, dividing. We're ready to look on the other stuff. All right. Uh, the other stuff is, remember, we solved one-step equations. I forgot to say this at the start of class. I, I forgot this. One-step equations. One-step equations. All right. One-step equation. Uh, one-step equation. I said that three times, and it's wrong. Two-step equations. There are two numbers we need to get rid of. So remember how this works. We look at the equation. Hey, remember, the equation is broken down into the left side and the right side. So I got a left side and I got a right side. We ask ourselves, where's the variable, left or right side? Once we identify what side it's on, we figure out what numbers do I need to get rid of. In this case, the variable is on the right side of the equal sign. There's two numbers I need to get rid of, a one and a negative two, one number at a time. I said, get rid of addition, subtraction first. So the first number I'm going to get rid of is not the negative two because it's attached to x by multiplication. I'm going to get rid of this positive one. Look to the left. It's positive. So how do you get rid of a positive one? You subtract one. And no, you don't need to write all the lines and arrows that I'm putting. So we're going to subtract one from both sides. On the right side, 1 minus 1 is 0. So I'm left with negative 2x. Okay, the, the ones went away. I'm left with negative 2x. On the left side, OK, we've got to still apply these rules. Look, same sign. Same sign means the add to add. 19 plus 1 is 20. We're adding same signs. So the answer is negative 20. Negative 20. Lastly, how do I get rid of the negative 2? Negative 2 is attached by multiplication. We get rid of multiplication by dividing. We're going to divide both sides by the number I'm trying to get rid of. I'm trying to get rid of the negative 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. Well, that's cool because the negative twos cancel. They turn into one. Uh, one times x is x. So on the right side, we're just left with x. And on the left side, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 20 divided by 2 is 10. We get to our final answer. x is equal to 10. And there you go. Two-step equation. Two-step equation. We could do a check step if we wanted to. If you have time on the test, why not? So that means take the 10, put it in for x, and let's see if it makes it true or false. Let's see, negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 1 is negative 19. There you go. Or 1 minus 20 is uh, negative 19. 
I think we need to do another one. Let's do one more or maybe two more. We'll see. All right, let's do this one. Once again, solving a two-step equation. We see what side of the, the equal sign the variable is on. It's on the left side this time. The two numbers that I need to get rid of are the minus four and the minus six. I always recommend get rid of additions and you don't need to circle them like I did. So I'm gonna get rid of the minus six first to get rid of minus six, the inverse of subtraction is addition. So we're gonna add six to both sides and I'm gonna literally put plus six. That way I can look at the signs. Six minus six is zero. So we're left with X, don't drop a negative, L over negative four, see the negative four there, is equal to, same or different signs, negative 11, positive six, different signs, says to subtract. So we subtract six uh, from 11, that's a five, and we have more negatives than positives, so negative five. Last step, I gotta get rid of this negative four, it's attached by division, you get rid of division by multiplication. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative four. Look where I put that negative four. I don't put it next to the negative four. Why? Because then that's really multiplying by one over negative four. So what I'm really multiplying is, you don't need to do this if you don't want to, put it over one. We do that because by design, because these would now cancel. And on the left side, you'd be left with X. On the right side, you'd be left with a negative times a negative is a positive be left with a positive 20. 20, I'm um, check step 20 divided by negative four is negative five, negative five minus six is negative 11. See how quickly you can do one of those check steps in your head, right? Uh, I'm not saying you have to do a check step, but if you have the time, why not? Um, I don't know, next year, a little bit of next year into algebra one, sometimes the, you know, you'd be doing you know, five or six step equation you might get a fractional answer and then and maybe it doesn't make sense to a check step. But when you have a two-step equation, why not do a check step? All right, we did adding, subtracting. We did multiplying, dividing. Uh, now we did solving a uh, two-step equation. Moving on. All right, there's a bunch of, there, a bunch of uh, ones there for practice, so enjoy. All right, the next thing we had was, um, was graphing points, graphing points. All right, now none of you complained about this. None of you even seem to even remotely have issues with this. So I'll just point out where the mistakes occur. Remember the mistakes typically occur when there's zeros involved or when there's negative numbers. Remember the first number, what, what I always recommended was to label X, Y. So it's in front of your face. So there's less chance of you messing up. Now notice it's gonna be really hard to label the bottom ones, but hopefully, since I have the top ones labeled, we can just carry that through. All right, I'll do point B first here. Remember it goes X, Y. X is the horizontal axis, Y is the vertical axis. So it goes uh, X negative seven. So I need to go to negative seven on the X. Notice I'm right here. I don't need to put a dot there. And then I need to go down to negative nine. So if I, from that dot, I go down negative nine. I put a big honking dot. And then I label that as point B. So point B is at negative seven, uh, negative nine. If I did put a little dot right there, I might erase it, okay? If I wanna count squares over or count tick lines over, I can, just don't make it too confusing. Uh, how about point uh, D, point D? Point D says the X value is positive 10. So we go way over to positive 10, I'm right here. And this says uh, go down three, one, two, three. So there is positive 10, uh, negative three. And I'm gonna label point D. Yeah, I'll give you four points, or sorry, five points to do. Uh, I'll, throw, I'll try to throw a couple of zeros in for tomorrow for practice so we don't mess that up. Uh, remember zero means you neither go left or right. If it's in the first uh, value, that's the X value. If it's in the second one, that, does, that means you don't go up or down any. All right, make sure you don't mess up the zeros or the negatives. That's where your mistakes will occur. I am giving you five here, so that's five easy points to get. Uh, and I also would recommend that you label. All right, uh, next thing will just be the reverse of that. I will give you points and ask you to write their coordinates. So when you do this process, remember, 
all coordinates are of the form x comma y, where x is how far you go left or right, and y is how far you go up or down. So for instance, point I, no, well, I put point I, that's the name of it. I open my parentheses and I need to find out how far I is to the left or right. Well, I is to the left, it looks like two squares or two tick marks, so I'm over left twice. And then it looks like I'm up, up is positive, down is negative, so positive two. There is point I. Uh, point E, let's see, point E, point E looks like X, Y, X is left and right, uh, Y is up and down. It looks like we are right six. Hey, I'm just looking, when they're really close to the, the, to, the, uh, to the axes, right, I'm just looking at the numbers. So it looks like I'm right six and then down one, two, three. Sometimes when they're far over, you can't uh, look at the numbers. Uh, you actually have to count the tick marks. So we're down three, so six, comma, negative three. That is my ordered pair. Won't well, insult your intelligence and do all these for you. I'll leave some of those for practice. Make sure when you're doing all of these, you are in fact checking your answers. You've heard me make this speech all oh, bunches and bunches and bunches of times. Hey, we're at practice test. Tomorrow isn't the test. It's Wednesday. Today is not the test. It's Wednesday. You should be doing all of these and checking your answers. If you're getting most of them or all of them right, you got no problems. If you're getting most of them wrong and you're doing nothing about it, like sending me a chat or send me an email, hey, I need help, but show me how to do these ones, then you're not doing your job as a student. Make sure you're getting these right. All right. And don't get so overconfident that you don't think you need a resource card either. The very last thing we did was the table of pain, table of pain. So it will ask you to graph an equation and it will be a linear equation. We're not to anything but linear equations this year. So we do a table of pain, a table of pain. Table of pain includes three columns. The first column is X. The second column is the equation itself where you do your scratch work. So Y is equal to what? X plus one. And the last column is your ordered pair. So that is your X and the answer that you get from the middle column, that's the Y value. The middle column will eventually simplify to y equals some number. So this last column is how we'll graph our points. So let's see. The numbers that I recommended that you should always use, at least in seventh grade, are negative two, oops, negative one, zero, one, and two. All right, let's do these. I take this equation, wherever I see an x, I'm going to write negative two. So I write y is equal to, I see an x. So I write a negative two, be careful, sometimes you will need parentheses, plus one. Same or different signs, negative and positive, different signs, that means subtract, big minus small, two minus one is one. There's more negatives than positives, so I get a negative one. So the point is if I throw in a negative two, the equation spits out a negative one. Now you can graph this point immediately or wait, I'll graph it immediately. So negative two, that's left two, down one is right there. If I do it correctly, we should get nice straight lines. Now let's throw in a negative one. So y is equal to not negative two this time, but negative one plus one. Hey, look, different signs. Subtract one minus one is zero. There's no positive or negative zero. It's just zero. So I get the point uh, negative one comma zero. Now you will always get a line with two points. So negative one, zero. It doesn't matter where I put this point, it'll make a nice straight line. So we had the conversation of how many points do I need to graph? Well, if you only graph two, two points, it will always make a line. I recommend three or more points because that way at least you have some sort of check on whether you're doing this right. If you're doing something wrong, you'll get a V or something. Uh, you will not get a, a nice straight line. We throw in zero, we like zero, zero makes our life easy. We throw zero in for X, so that would be zero plus one, which is one. Don't need any, any help to do with that one, that one's easy. So we get zero comma one. Now, if I did it correctly, it should make a nice straight line. If I've done something incorrectly, this is where you'll notice it. So zero one is right here. Hey, look, it did make a nice straight line. Technically, that's all I really need. I've confirmed it makes a straight line. I'll do the other points. Uh, y is equal to, it said let X be the value of one. So we get one plus one. One plus one is two. 
So I get the point one comma two. Once again, if I done the math right, should make a nice straight line. One comma two is right here. Look, nice straight line. And the last one real quick, throw in a two for X. Y is equal to what? Two plus one. And that's the value three. So we get two comma three, two comma three. Now I graph five points. I want you to do at least three points. Three points will tell you if you got it right. Two comma three. And then don't forget, you need to draw a line or play connect the dots between all your points. And there we go. Done. So that one's a little bit easy. Let's do a bit more challenging one. Well, this is a lot to erase. And then we'll call it quits, or I'll open it up to questions and help for anyone that needs it. Okay, one more, last one. Uh, number 30, I shouldn't have erased my table, should I have? All right, table, I'll just do uh, three points this time. All right, X, uh, Y is equal to, uh, let's see, negative two X, minus one. This one will definitely require parentheses and then the point X comma Y. All right, if I'm only picking three points, I'm gonna pick the three easiest numbers, negative one, zero, and positive one. Rewrite the equation, throwing in the X value, Y is equal to negative two. Don't forget, it says negative two. Now we come to multiply by the value X, so I need parentheses. Without the parentheses, it would look like negative two minus one minus one. Don't forget that other minus one. Negative times a negative is a positive. So that would be two minus one, which is the value one. Now that's a lot of math to do in your head. So be careful. Look at it. Maybe use scratch work if you need to. So we get negative one comma one. Now remember that will always make uh, a line because there's only one point. How do you know it's wrong until you put the other ones in there? So y equals negative two, this is why we like zero, times zero, easy, that means it's zero, minus one. If negative two minus zero is zero, then minus one would be minus one. So we get negative one. And once again, be careful. When we graph the second point, it will always make a line. Two points make one line, okay? In order to figure, oh, I didn't graph, did I? Negative one comma positive one, and we get zero, negative one. Notice it's always gonna make a line. If I've done it correctly, my, my second one, I think should be right here, right? I'm gonna do it even before I do the math. Well, let's see what happens. Y equals, let's see, negative two times a positive one, minus one. Negative two times positive one, different signs. That means the answer is negative, negative two minus one. Scratch work, negative two minus one. Same signs means add, so we get negative three. So the point I get is one comma negative three and it's where I put my other point. So life is grand and we got it right. All right, don't forget to graph. So if we graph our final answer, there we go. And notice I put arrows on it. Make sure you put arrows because the linear equation goes on forever, never stops. There we go, that's the whole darn test. So let's see, we had adding, subtracting, positive and negative numbers. We had multiplying, and dividing, positive and negative numbers. We had solving two-step equations involving integers, positive and negative numbers. We had graphing points, positive and negative integers. We had uh, writing the coordinates of given points, positive and negative. And then lastly, we had graphing linear equations. All right, that is the whole test. No, it won't be 30. Is it, did I give you more than 30? Yeah, I gave you up to 32. Uh, it will not be uh, 32 questions, but guaranteed it will be in the 20s, right? Not 20 something questions uh, on the test. Uh, no, I'm not pulling any punches. What's, what you see before you is what the test will absolutely positively look like. Make sure you do the practice tests. Make sure you do the practice test. All right. Any questions on anything, anything that I've said?
it is not surprising that the four people that always show up for a class are the four people that typically get the A's. So thank you for you four people that showed up. Uh, Carson was here earlier. Um, and uh, tomorrow, if you want to hear the class, you can. If not, it's up to you. I will have the practice test posted. Um, absolutely, positively do both practice tests. It's good practice. Shouldn't take you too long. All right. Um, I will uh, remain on chat for anyone that needs help. If you don't need help, uh, do the practice problems. But if you do need help, I will be on chat for the remainder of the time. Let's see, we got about, what, 10, 15 minutes left. Um, if you don't want to do this, you can do stuff for, for other classes as well, too. I'll leave that entirely up to you. But that'll do it for today. You guys have a wonderful day. Send me a message if you need to. Uh, if not, uh, drive on with your bad self and I'll see you guys tomorrow.